Good morning, afternoon or evening and welcome back to Zero AD Fundamentals. This week we're looking at something that is pretty essential to the game. So I'll accept that we all love fighting, but the fact is that without the resources to pay for them, you have no army. So how is it best to allocate your resource gatherers to ensure that you have a sustainable and solid army? Well, that's what we'll be looking at today. So economy refers to your citizens collecting resources as well as our push trading. You can then spend those resources on more units, buildings and technologies. Each of those aspects will be covered in other videos, but this is just the basics about your economy and some principles on how to manage it. It's aimed at beginners, but it has something for everyone. But trigger warning, it also contains maths. So the fundamentals of economy relate to a quite simple cycle. Citizens collect resources, Resources are used to train more citizens. Those citizens then collect more resources, and that allows you to train an even greater number of citizens. In this way, an economy grows and a player's position is strengthened. Throw in building the odd house and other building, and you've got the basic mechanic. That said, this is interspersed with a few different complexities. After all, you're not only collecting resources, you need to be able to explore the map, defend yourself from enemy attacks, and probably make some attacks of your own. But those things aside, let's look at the basics behind economy, beginning with how quickly different units collect resources. And so here are the speeds. Drink them in. So, we're going to look at what this means for how to allocate your citizens earlier in the game in another video, which will be Basics of Build Orders. However, this episode is about general principles that apply throughout the game, from start to finish. So, from the above, you'll have realised that female villagers farm far more quickly than male citizen soldiers, but citizen soldiers will mine about 42% more quickly than their villager counterparts. This means that who should be on each of those resources is fairly clear-cut. However, where woodcutting is concerned, it's far less obvious who should be used, and this is especially true in the early game where wood is such an important resource. Now it would be easy to see that citizen soldiers will chop wood marginally more quickly than female citizens, and then assume that they are therefore the better option. Collecting at 7 wood per every 10 seconds as opposed to 7.5, it takes just over 14 seconds for a villager to collect 10 wood, while it's 13 and a third seconds for soldiers but it's not that straightforward to decide which is actually better, and here are four reasons why. Firstly, they have different movement speeds, which is important in terms of actually depositing the wood that they cut. Now, villagers have a speed of 9, which is the same as swordsmen and spearmen, but slower than all the range infantry. So those range infantry will not only be quicker to cut the wood, they'll have reduced travel time to deposit it as well. Another important factor is training time. You have to take into account that it takes an extra three seconds to train a soldier rather than a villager. And basically that means a villager will have chopped an additional 2.1 wood by the time a soldier begins cutting their first tree. Assuming, of course, that they take the same time to travel to the wood from wherever they spawn. The third thing is that soldiers also cost wood to train, and that's not true of female villagers. So in order to fully compare soldiers, we need to take into account that it takes over a minute and six seconds just for a soldier to chop 50 wood. And that's not including any time for the five trips to and from the drop site that are required, which could easily add another 10 to 15 seconds to that total, which is something to think about. Now, the previous points probably made you think that soldiers just don't pay for themselves, but they do, and that's because they can fight. Basically, they have the ability to collect resources, but also to make attacks and defend. And that means they're less likely to be raided and killed en masse, which makes them worth having. So that in itself gives you an idea of some of the considerations that you want to make when deciding who should be chopping your wood. Now, from my point of view, I'd like to think that after a few minutes, at least a third of my woodcutters and any woodliner soldiers, and I generally split those between melee and range infantry. And this is because I want them to be able to defend women from any cavalry raids. That said, you may be more or in fact less risk averse and just prefer a different split. Whatever you do though, be vigilant. So taking what we've learned into account, the biggest question after you've started running out of berries and chickens is how many people should you have on farms in relation to chopping wood? Well, before we can answer that, an important point of clarification that you may not be aware of. Now, each farmer that you add to a field is 10% less efficient than the previous one. This means that the fifth farmer is collecting about 3.2 food every 10 seconds, while the first farmer is collecting five. And when you add up the five farmers, this means that the average five-person farm collects about two food per second. 
this is roughly the same as it takes for three woodcutters to chop two wood. But when you take into account that the woodcutters also need to go to and from a drop site, whereas farmers don't really have to do that so much, this means you probably need to add another woodcutter to get to equivalent timings, so four. Therefore, to collect the same amount of food and wood with no upgrade means that for every five women working on a farm, you probably need four woodcutters reasonably close to a storehouse. But you are going to also be needing to collect more wood as it's required for buildings as well as soldiers. Well, for every 10 population, you require, for most factions, 150 wood for houses. And let's assume you've reached a part of the main where you're training mostly soldiers. So for 500 food, you're going to need, assuming of course you're not making slingers, at least 650 wood. But perhaps you also need a storehouse, farm, farmstead or barracks, something like that. Obviously that's not all going to be happening at once, but let's say for every 10 it adds another 100 wood. This gives you a total of 750. So the ratio now works out at about 8 woodcutters for every 5 farmers to move your economy forward. This is prone to all kinds of differences for factions that may rely more or less heavily on stone or metal, but as a basis it works pretty well. And having briefly touched on minerals, let's have a quick chat about miners. To collect at the same speed that we mentioned earlier, two resources per second, you're going to need four soldiers on minerals, and that assumes almost zero travel time to the drop site, which is fair as you can usually set a number of drop sites around the stone or metal, giving travel time pretty much equivalent to farmers. Therefore, the following ratios will achieve the same rate of two of the resource per second. Farmers on one field, five. Miners, four. Woodcutters, three, perhaps four. So how you allocate yourself depends on the resources that you need at each stage of the game and also which techs you've researched to speed up your resource collection. But with no upgrades, those are the ratios you're going to get. So I hope you enjoyed that and you learned something. Many thanks for watching and remember to like, subscribe, click the bell, do all those sorts of things and I'll see you in a week. Obrigado e adeus.